Welcome to the Blues Asia Network on UR Face Radio. Your host, Tom Cat Cole. The only source covering blues across Asia and the Pacific. The chief of train rolling, steady cross the land. We're back on segment two of our Blues Asia show. Only here at the UR Face Radio Bristol. We're here with Mr. Tom Col- Tomcat Colvin. Yeah. <laughs> and your co host, Arvin Austria. And we're going to talk a lot of Blues events, especially producing a video. Yeah, that's one of the best. Produce a video. Good video. So just sit back and relax and enjoy the blues. Okay. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yeah, Arvin, we are back. Segment two of week number four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, let's talk about our feedback, sir. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we continue to get really great uh, feedback. And uh, one of the, actually, one of the first people to get in touch with us after we went international was Dom Turner. And uh, Dom is uh, from Australia. And uh, he is uh, a member of one of the most important blues bands in Australia called the Backsliders. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, we featured him actually a couple of weeks ago uh, about a project that he's doing in Vietnam. Um, But we wanted to come back to Dom this week because uh, he has sort of uh, shared with us that he will be stopping over in Singapore on November 26 yeah. at the Crazy Elephant. Yeah. And he's going to be sitting in there at, at Crazy Elephant and joining yeah. his friend... Uh, the harmonica player. The harmonica player, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Alex Terry. Uh, yeah, Alex Terry, who uh, uh, apparently is uh, quite a name there in, in Singapore and also goes up to mm-hmm. Kuala Lumpur, Alex yeah. does, to play. But... Uh, They'll be uh, sitting in at the Crazy Elephant. And, uh, hey, we've got a friend in Singapore, uh, Jimmy Lim, who likes to get videos. And, Jimmy, if you're listening, how about getting a video of Dom and Alex playing at the Crazy Elephant on the 26th and post it so we can share it with everybody? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. In any case... uh, uh, we thought it would be uh, worthwhile just to give you a hint of uh, what uh, Dom's playing is all about. Uh, and uh, Arvin, tell us a little bit about this uh, video we're going to look at. Yeah, but, oh, by the way, sir, his band named Backsliders yes. were, mm-hmm. were nominated for Australian Record Industry Award for Blues. That's right, for this year, for the album that's just come out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's big stuff. Uh, and particularly in Australia, where there's so many blues bands. Oh, yeah. The Box Lighters. New album is called Starvation Backs. The new 2011 Box Lighters album will be released via Fuse Records on August 12. 
Available in all good record stores online, recorded in another former Midnight All member, Jim Mugini, uh, Jim Mugini Studio, Oceanic, Stu Oceanic Studios on Sydney's Northern Beaches. <laughs> Star <laughs> Starvation <laughs> Box is an affectionate nut, but Bond's past heroes containing five covers of past greats including Lead Belly, Robert Johnson, and Blues Mandolin Elder Statesman and another key backslider influence Young Crushell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you'll notice Dom he really has been influenced by the early acoustic uh blues players and uh and that is certainly reflected in in this album and uh what is the term starvation box what does that refer to yeah. the album itself is based on the story that lead belly's father was used to call his son guitar a starvation starvation box because you ain't gonna make no money out of that thing <laughs> 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 so they called the guitar as a starvation box <laughs> yeah the starvation box i just think that's priceless and a great, great name for an album. Yeah, and after Lead Bellis that the Weavers went to make a good income from his songs. Yeah. Uh, the Good Night Irene. Hey, The Good Night, The yeah. Irene, and so his father was partly right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, why don't we, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, video and Dom Turner uh, and the Backsliders. Uh, okay, come on, Dom. Rock and roll has got to go. Please do some rock and roll music and why I preach against it and I believe with all of my heart that it is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Why I believe that is because I know how it feels when you sing it. I know what it does to you. And I, I know uh, the evil feeling that you feel when you sing it. Emmett Till, Emmett Till, you're just a child. Now to tell the truth, I'm not an expert on rock and roll. His first guitar cost $12.95. Today, he pays $300 for his guitars, yet he still can't read music. In fact, his musical technique is such that sometimes he breaks the strings of his guitar before he finishes the show. Okay, now that is a really interesting uh, promo yeah. for this new <clears throat> album. And uh, it's important for blues musicians to promote themselves, and video is, that's the way to go. Yeah. And uh, uh, in any case, uh, we want to talk just a little bit about uh, uh, promotional what video. What makes a good video? Yeah, what yeah. makes a good video? And one, <clears throat> the visuals have to be interesting. And, um, and normally, uh, you want a good steady shot. It's not jiggly. Yeah. Uh, the, the camera can move around, but it still has to have a steady feel to it. And... The major thing is the audio. I mean, after all, it's music. Yeah. It's the audio that is really most important. And it is the most difficult thing to get 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, particularly with the, the <clears throat> cameras, the home cameras we use, they can get good pictures, but the audio... Yeah, especially cell phones. Don't yeah, don't yeah, use those, that. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to look at a video that was shared with us by a band out of Angeles City in the Philippines. Oh, well, oh that's good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it uh, this band is uh, uh, they're in the studio right now working on their album, uh, and. Um, the name of the band is Tibuan, and um, uh, and they're working on this album, and they came up with a really interesting idea, and that is, well, we're in a studio, we're getting good sound, why don't we invite in a videographer, <laughs> and let's produce a video in the studio. Yeah, very good idea. And so that's what they did. And they took the, the video, and then they took the, the audio right off of the mixer. Uh, so everything was properly mixed. The audio is absolutely exquisite. Um, and uh, we're going to see uh, what they came up with uh, in this video. And uh, it, uh, I mean, we're getting the rough... Uh, version of you'll even see it's got the color bars and the count countdown and this thing is just come out of the the uh, editing machine um, and one of the interesting things this video was shot with a Nikon D90 camera uh, it's uh, that's a, a nice camera but I mean it's nothing terribly extraordinary and then they used a second camera, and this is what I found most interesting. They used a second camera to get what they call cutaways. And the second camera, guess what it was? I don't, I don't have a, an idea. It was an iPhone. Oh. It was an iPhone they used as their second camera. And, uh, and boy, did they get good results. Uh, in any case, let's take a look at what this band was able yeah, to better, get. Yeah, better check it out. Yeah, let's check it out. And we'll go through the, uh, uh, you can go ahead and start the thing. We'll go through the, yeah, there are the color bars. And then we'll count down. And, uh, yep, and here it is. Get ready, folks, sure. for Tabooin. Alles klar, Jungs. Can we jetzt aufnehmen? Seid ihr soweit? Okay, Band läuft.
das war sehr gut. Jungs, macht so weiter und ihr werdet großen Erfolg haben. <laughs> yeah, the band there is Tabuan from Analyst City in the Philippines. They're working on their first album, and the studio uh, is the studio of Klaus uh, Burkhardt. He's a German uh, recording engineer who's moved to the Philippines uh, with his Filipina oh, really? wife. <laughs> So there's a very fine studio yeah, up there in, yeah. in Annalis. And the videographer is a Filipino named Nigel Ian Laksamana. And uh, the uh, uh, camera equipment they used was nothing extraordinary, uh, but uh, they got good pictures. Yeah, very professional. Yeah, and uh, of course the magic in that was in the editing. Uh, now, <coughs> bands out there. Their recording is look like uh, MTV <laughs> yeah, music video. Yeah, exactly. It comes across like an MTV. It's <laughs> interesting to watch. A lot of variety and yeah. movement in it. And they got great sound because they were right there in a recording studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they tapped a friend of theirs uh, to do the video that you know that's a great way for a band to go is find a recording still you have to have good lighting that's one of the keys is you need to find a studio where the lights are pretty good uh, and then get a videographer to come in and make yourself a smashingly good yeah. video and you can probably do it without spending a whole lot of money, particularly if you got a, can find a videographer friend who knows how to do some creative editing. Uh, so anyway, that is our primary example uh, tonight of how to make a good video. But I'm going to follow that up with another one. Uh, we got here at Blues Asian Network uh, a few weeks ago. We got an inquiry uh, by email uh, from a band in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the uh, band members are expats working in Cambodia. Uh, but they uh, sent us uh, an inquiry, I guess it was about five, five weeks ago, six weeks ago, and they said, can you give us some advice about how to make a decent video at a gig? <laughs> oh. And so we responded and, and, you know, sent them a few suggestions. And just this week, we've gotten one of the results. Uh, and uh, this is um, uh, the band in, in Cambodia there. And the, they just made a video at one of their gigs. They were playing at the Foreign Correspondence Club in uh, Phnom Penh. And the band name is Little Duke and the Mekong Blues Messengers. Messengers. And uh, in any case, uh, we're going to see what they captured at one of their gigs. And... Uh, it's not, not bad for a first outing on getting video. Yeah. So let's, um, let's take a listen to this band, and then uh, afterwards I'll tell you a bit more about them. Little Duke and the Mekong uh, Blues Messengers. <laughs>
So that is um, Little Duke and the Mekong Blues Messengers, a band working uh, in Phnom Penh. They're uh, all expats. Um, and uh, uh, when uh, Kristen, the singer, uh, you know, sent us an inquiry about, you know, uh, advice about making a video, we told her essentially two things. One is get a steady picture and perhaps use a tripod, which they did. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece of advice, which I think is more critical, is uh, position the camera off to the side and close to the PA speaker. And the reason for doing that is the PA speakers where your voice, your vocals are going to come out of. Okay. And if you get the camera over close to the PA speaker, it's going to give you better vocals. And that is what usually suffers in band videos. Yeah. Uh, and you notice in that video, the vocals actually came through not bad. Yeah, they made a good job. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, Kristen, uh, great job, guys. Yeah. And uh, keep on making the blues. I'll tell you a little bit more. The band, uh, actually, they have, they have two bands. They have an acoustic band under the name of Bayon Blues. And that band uh, features Kristen on vocals and uh, yeah, Jonas Little Duke Hastings on guitar and Ken White on oh, harmonicas. Oh, and then they add in uh, two people to make an electric band, which is the one called Little Duke and the Mekong Blues Messengers. And they add in Chris Hillary on bass and Steve Miller on drums. Uh, anyway, great job. And. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing more. more. Yeah. Yeah. So keep it rolling. Um, okay. And thanks a lot for sharing all that with us, Kristen. Uh, another example of good feedback we're getting here and with material that we can share around the world. Uh, now, we want to share a little news uh, with you. Uh, there's going to be a new blues band uh showing up in manila uh except the the band is composed of old timers uh the band's name is tarantulas they'll be playing at the hobbit house this coming uh saturday uh the november uh 12 uh, and the core of the group 
are session musicians who used to be at the heart of a band called Hookah. Oh, now, yeah. did you ever hear of the band Hookah? They they disbanded some years back. Yeah, but yeah. You have heard of yeah. them, okay? Uh, and they were a well-known blues band here. Um, and uh, but anyway, they've come back together with a new singer, and so the. Hookah uh, instrumentalists have joined up with uh, Juni Centeno as their singer and harmonica player, and then they've added in uh, added in uh, Barong Salvador on guitar, uh, and they will be making some great blues. So yeah. Manila's got yet another new blues voice in town. Good, yeah. yeah but so unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't have a clip. We don't have a clip yet because they're new, <laughs> but we'll have to get one. Uh, and because they're <coughs> uh, sessionists and these musicians play in different bands, we probably won't hear them frequently. Uh. We'll hear them from time to time. Uh, but I can guarantee that they'll be playing some good blues. Uh, okay, another piece of news, very important uh, for us out here in Asia. Uh, there is a harmonica player recently chosen by his harmonica peers as the harmonica player, uh, best harmonica player of 2011. <laughs> oh, whoa. Wow. And um, his name is Brendan Power. Uh, he uh, is from New Zealand, but he now lives in England. And he is a major authority on the harmonica both diatonic and chromatic and he does uh, harmonica clinics uh, worldwide Ooh, wow. as a matter of fact <clears throat> and uh, he is just about to launch his Asian tour and uh, he's going to be in India from November 22nd to the 30th stopping off in a number of cities there um, and then uh, he may be uh, making a stop over in uh, Thailand, uh, December 1 to 3. Not sure about that. Uh, anyway, December 4 to 8, he's going to be right here it in the Philippines. Yeah. And then from here, he moves on to Taiwan, December 9 to 14. Then he's in Hong Kong, December 15 to 17. Uh, mainland China from December 18 to 25, and Indonesia, December 25 to 31. And in all those places, he'll be giving uh, workshops. Uh, he's being, the tour is being sponsored by Suzuka, Suzuki Harmonica mm, that's great. Out, of, out of Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people don't realize you know, uh, uh, the blues harmonica players, that most of the blues harmonicas are actually manufactured in Asia. And Suzuki has come on as one of the most innovative of the harmonica manufacturers with a number of uh, new models mm. and, uh, and that are just very exciting to play. In any case, uh, Brendan in his Asian tour, and this give you an idea of what he can do, and uh, uh, this song says it all. I'm a harmonica man by Brendan Power. He wrote this song, too. And here he's performing at a blues festival. <laughs> Oh! 
always keep one in my pocket, ready to take it out and play. Well, the sound so sweet and so cool. That's why I make the harp my choice. Yeah, the sound so sweet and so cool. That's why I make the harp my choice. Well, it sounds so sad and lonesome. Sounded like the human voice. The harp can wail, can scream, can softly whisper too. It sounded like a freight train coming right at you. Yeah, it's small, but it's powerful. Great, it's little fan and round.
Ace, and he's going to be touring all over Asia starting uh, uh, November 22. So, uh, in any case, uh, we're looking forward to his visit here in the Philippines as well. And I might mention, since we're talking harmonica, and I just mentioned the Philippines, there is a brand new Facebook group, uh, and it is called Pinoy Harmonica. Uh, do you know who made that group? <laughs> yes. <laughs> who made that group? Our vocal, our harmonica player. Yeah, uh, your harmonica player. <laughs> Ian Lafamia. Yeah. And anyway, he just created that group uh, within the last week. Yeah. And uh, uh, sharing leaks about harmonica. Yeah. Leaks. And uh, anyway, it's going to be a great, great resource for harmonica players here in the Philippines. And yeah. there are similar groups in other countries there's a there's a group for in uh, <clears throat> about harmonica uh, in india there's a facebook group for harmonica in malaysia oh, uh, cool. yeah and uh, speaking of malaysia and harmonica uh, our next video is going to feature one of the finest blues diatonic players in southeast asia zen wang and uh, th this video uh, is, uh, it was uh, taken from a, a gig of his just on October 16. And he's playing uh, with a um, guitar player uh, that he often teams up with uh, named uh, Aziz Aznan Aziz. Yeah. Aziz. And everybody just calls him Nan. So this uh, uh, video is Drifting Blues Shuffle by Nan and Zen from Kuala Lumpur. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
found on the sea. I'm drifting and drifting. Like the ship found on the sea. While I have me nobody in the world to care for me. My baby, but all it take me back again. Poor. It was a special event uh, for some visiting Taiwanese. Uh, they were invited to to play for, and uh, I've seen uh, a, a number of Zen's uh, videos, and I think this one is technically the best. And I I sent a message and said, you know, how is that so? And he said, well, I he said, hey, we were using the same camera. I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But here's my observation. Um, one is the camera was, again, off to the side, and the vocals really came through very, very clear. And I'll bet you that camera was, again, close to the PA yeah. speaker. And, um, mm -hmm. and uh, that just makes a big difference. Of course, it's an acoustic band, so the vocalist is not trying to cut through all that electric yeah. stuff and um uh, you know I, you play an electric band i'd be curious to see what you think about this i think one of the greatest problems with an electric blues band is the guitarists get too excited and play too loud and cover up the vocals yeah. and you can't understand what the vocalist is yeah. singing yeah uh, <laughs> you're a guitar player, but you're one of the things I've noticed in your band is you know how to. But but that's our biggest problem on our past. Uh, they always told me that you're playing too loud. You're yeah. overpowering the vocalist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happens all, all the, time. 
the time. And sometimes, Sir Tom, you'll you'll not notice that you're playing too loud because you're too close on the amplifier. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like that. Yeah, that's a really interesting point because if you're standing close to your amp, the amp is down on the floor and your ears are up here, yeah. so you don't get the full force yes. of the sound coming and you out. You don't know over the audience that your amplifier. That's it's, right. It's too loud. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, there's a caution for for you bands out there, and particularly the guitarists. Yeah. Be very yeah. uh, attentive to your sound and don't overpower the vocalist. You can yeah. crank up during your solo, but... Um, and that is what the sound check is all about, to check your sound first before playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And... Uh, this is uh, a lot of people think this is a crazy suggestion, but I like to tell bands find a friend <coughs> who is a techie oriented kind of person and yeah, I agree and yeah. bring them along to be your technician, buy them a beer or two, uh, but let them sit out front yeah and and then they can give come up and tell talk to the sound man and say, oh bring this up and take that down and need a little more bass here and yeah uh and it because you know it's it's the sound out front is the key and when you're playing on the stage you're not hearing what the people out in front yeah i agree are, yeah <laughs> so uh in any case um so uh, Zen, thanks a lot for sharing that video with us. Uh, another one of the really yeah, nice feedbacks nice, yeah. that, that we've had. Um, and uh, anyway, we promised uh, that in segment two we would return to an extraordinary uh, young guitarist. Yeah. And um, uh, we always feature every week we do a spotlight on a young player. Now, uh, in this case, uh, uh, this player is he's finger style guitarist and he does all kinds of things, not just he does some blues, but he he does a wide range of material. Um, but uh, tell us a little bit about this guy and about his presence on. Uh, yeah, yeah. YouTube. Yeah, you can't believe, Sir Tom, this kid has a million views. Not a million, but a hundred million. Yeah. To be exact, it is uh, 353 million views, yeah? Yeah, over, <laughs> he's been <laughs> that's on... That's crazy, <laughs> yeah. insane, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is, is crazy, but he's been uh, online for five years. He went online when he was 10 years old on yeah. YouTube. Uh, but... Uh, and how many subscribers does he have? Uh, 500,000. <laughs> <laughs> 500,000 subscribers. Yeah. Uh, well, he... Uh, and as a matter of fact, he uploaded a video in a day, and yeah. he got 50,000 uh, views for only... In well, one day, in one day, yeah. yeah, that was the video we played in the in segment, segment one, one yeah. uh, and he posted it just yesterday. And by early this afternoon, he already had fifteen thousand. <laughs> huh. But you know, he's really earned it because, first of all, he's a good musician. Yeah, and secondly, he shares a lot. He yeah. just every week he'll put up two or three new songs the most prolific young uh person i know in terms of putting music up and he met a lot of uh a lot of legend guitarists also yeah yeah and and he's touring as a matter of fact he's uh, just finished his second album uh oh and this kid has uh, two albums two already. albums already <laughs> two albums already and uh and uh, in September, he toured uh, around in the U.S. promoting his album. And then he ended up in Bangkok on the 30th. Uh, I know that he uh, did some touring in Europe early in the year. And the kid's only 15 now with two albums. Uh, but we'd like to share 
another video of him. This one is also from the Bangkok Acoustic Guitar Celebration. And this is fr- was from its first year in 2009. Yeah. So uh, Sung Ha Jung was only 13. <laughs> and in this uh, video, he's performing with one of the absolute greats on acoustic fingerstyle guitar, Tommy Emmanuel. So let's take a look and watch this phenomenal musician. <laughs> We we are going to play, we will play something very familiar to you, and uh, this is some music by the Beatles.
Sung Hai Jung. And uh, you can find tons of stuff from him on Facebook. Just look, search for S U N G H A J U N G. <laughs> and um, this guy, this kid is incredible. Yeah, he is. I've I've been subscribed to his channel for at least a year now, and uh, and every now and then I'll download something and and save it to my hard disk because I really like his music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we're about to wrap up segment two of week number four. That means we've been international. For one month <laughs> already. Yeah, I mean, it's gosh, it doesn't seem like that long. <laughs> uh, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, and we want to thank once again all of you who've been giving us feedback. Uh, yeah, thank and, you very much. Yeah, if you if you are tuning in and uh, listening to us uh, on demand on YouTube, our YouTube channel, uh, consider leaving us a video comment. And perhaps we'll replay it yeah. next week. And um, also, be sure to check out our website. new design website. And uh, the uh, you can go to, I mean, it's not hard to remember, it's www.blue.